Get ready for a mind-blowing twist on the classic overpopulation tale. For centuries, thinkers like Thomas Robert Malthus warned us about running out of space and resources, with too many people crammed onto our home planet. But imagine if Earth was actually a super-Earth, a massive world up to ten times bigger than what we know today. Would this cosmic upgrade solve all our problems or unleash chaos? Theories suggest that Earth could have been on the path to becoming a super-Earth, but Jupiter stepped in and put the brakes on its growth, leaving us with the planet we call home. Buckle up for the shockwave of what could have been. If Jupiter hadn't intervened, Earth's growth spurt would have had a wild effect on everything, literally everything. It's not just about size, we're talking about a gravity overhaul. Buildings that touch the sky, like Dubai's Burj Khalifa, would come crashing down and humanity might bid farewell to skyscrapers forever. Trees, mountains, and animals. They'd shrink, but their weight would skyrocket. Imagine trees being so heavy they're nearly immovable. And as for you, if Earth was double its current size, your 160, 5 pounds would now be a chunky 330 pounds. If it were 10 times more massive, that's a whopping 1,000. 650 pounds you'd be carrying around. But hold on to your seat. Things are about to get a whole lot worse. A supersized Earth would mean meteorites and asteroids would start raining down on us way more often, effectively solving the overpopulation problem with a deadly twist extinction. The heavier gravity wouldn't just make you heavier, it'd also compress our atmosphere, making it thinner and changing pressure levels. This combo of crushing gravity and intense pressure It'd wipe out mountain ranges, leaving fewer breathtaking landscapes, but creating a whole new world of island habitats for both humans and animals to call home. A trade-off that's more survival than sightseeing. Conquering space, forget about it. Imagine trying to blast off into orbit on our hypothetical supermassive Earth. It'd be a near-impossible feat. The Falcon Heavy, space's beast of a rocket, can currently carry an incredible 110,000 pounds into our skies, but with Earth as massive as Kepler-20b, that number would plummet to just 88 pounds, about the weight of a German Shepherd. Even if we managed to launch from this gravity wrecker, it'd cost us an arm and a leg, be an engineering nightmare and yield next to nothing. But wait, there's more bad news. Our supersized Earth would also crank up pressure in its core, causing the liquid part to cool down. This means our trusty magnetic shield against solar wind could disappear forever, leaving us vulnerable to the harsh space environment. And if you thought things couldn't get any worse, Buckle up because they just did. With our planet's magnetic shield gone, solar radiation would become a major killer. Constant meteor showers wouldn't even give us time to catch our breath before the next deadly hit. But here's another showstopper. A super-Earth's core pressure would trigger non-stop volcanic eruptions. All that pent-up energy would need an escape route, and volcanoes would be the ultimate exit strategy. Problem is, with these eruptions happening left and right, it'd be near impossible to live anywhere near them. Talk about a recipe for disaster. And don't even get me started on the climate chaos they'd unleash, making this planet basically uninhabitable. Fasten your seatbelts because we're about to take this doomsday scenario to the next level. Imagine an atmosphere that's off the charts. Way, way hotter than Greta Thunberg's worst nightmares. But here's the thing, volcanic smog would block sunlight, casting our world in a perpetual gloom and freezing everything solid. It's a nightmare scenario where all life would literally be put on ice. Now, you might think we've hit rock bottom, but hold on, because there's more. On these massive water worlds, volcanoes often go rogue beneath the surface of the ocean. And if our super-Earth is fully submerged, with no land in sight, who knows? Maybe humanity could somehow adapt and find a way to survive amidst this aquatic Armageddon. But wait, there's more to this apocalyptic tale. It turns out life might not stand a chance even on an ocean-covered super-Earth. The extreme pressure down here would freeze the ocean floor solid, trapping it under a thick ice sheet. This means our planet's carbon cycle and mineral exchange would come to a grinding halt. Basically, the essential fuel for life would be cut off. Now, let's dive into some real science according to researcher Hilke Schlichting from UCLA. If Earth were a super-Earth, all that water would simply vanish into thin air. The reason, a super-Earth in our sun's orbit just wouldn't work out. It'd rotate way too close, completing a year in an insane 100 days. That might be habitable with smaller stars, but for our sun, it's a recipe for disaster. All the water would evaporate into space. So, it looks like life on a super-Earthly isn't just unlikely, it's straight-up impossible. Hold up, it looks like our super-Earth story just took an unexpected twist. Astrophysicist Rodrigo Luger from the Flatiron Institute thinks that maybe, just maybe, these massive planets aren't completely doomed after all. According to his theory, super-Earths could form from chunks of ice that eventually melt as they get closer to their star, creating a planet-wide ocean. 
Whoa, talk about an aquatic utopia. It's also worth noting that these icy worlds might be the most common type out there. We've already spotted over 4,000 exoplanets with the Kepler Space Telescope, and about 30% of them are super-Earths. So, if you're on the hunt for a new home, it looks like focusing on these aquatic giants could be your best bet. Let's get real for a second. The other 70% of exoplanets out there are mostly gas giants, and who wants to live on a planet that's basically just a giant ball of air? Not me, super-Earths, with their increased gravity, might be our best bet for finding a cozy new home. But every time scientists announce a new super-Earth discovery, the hype train rolls in and headlines scream about finally finding extraterrestrial life. Spoiler alert, it's rarely that simple. While some planets get all the attention, like Proxima Centauri b, let's be real, it's not actually a super-Earth. Scientists are still holding out hope for this one, but we'll see what the future holds. So what's the latest on Proxima Centauri b? Unfortunately, that flash of activity on its star basically wiped out any chance of life there. Back to square one. But don't worry, scientists haven't given up. They've got another super-Earth in their sights, JJ3570. This one's a real contender, located just 31 light-years from our own planet. It's a biggie too, with six times the mass of Earth and twice its size. GJ3570 zooms around its star in just 50, 5.7 days, that's seriously fast, and here's the thing it's about five times closer to its star than we are to the sun. That means it must be scorching hot, making it a bit of an extreme environment for any potential life. Still, it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. Let's dive deeper into GG35-70 WA. This super-Earth is actually pretty special because its tiny, chilly star means its habitable zone is super close in. That raises the possibility of liquid water on the planet, which is huge for life. Diana Kosakowski from the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy is already planning to search for more signs of life. And guess what? There's another super-Earth just 30, 9 light-years away, GJ188. Now, this one's a real oddball because it's tidally locked, meaning it always shows the same face to its star, kind of like our moon does with Earth. This tidally locked situation makes it tough for life to emerge since a magnetic field is essential, and that just can't form on this planet. G37D is the real MVP because it's not tidally locked to its star, giving it a way better shot at hosting life. Now, let's talk about gg 29 a This superstar is only 19 light years away and packs quite an orbit around two stars. Yes, you heard that right, two stars. One's a brown dwarf and the other's a red dwarf. The system's got some serious drama going on. Meanwhile, scientists have been keeping their eyes peeled for life elsewhere, including on K218b. It's technically a super-Earth, but has a composition more like our cool cousin mini-Neptune. Meet the mini-Neptunes, they're the cool blend of gas giants and terrestrial planets, with rocky cores wrapped up in a thick gas blanket. And get this, K218b is basically an oddball as it's got the mass of a super-Earth, but its low density screams mini-Neptune. The big deal here is that scientists detected signs of liquid water on this planet, a major key to life, which had them stoked about the possibility of life outside our solar system. But guess what? Life didn't pop up on some far-off super-Earth. It was right here, back on good old Earth, so we've been talking about super-Earths. But here's the thing, our tiny Earth actually has some major perks compared to those big planets. Imagine living on a super-Earth with super-strong gravity, though. Would you trade in your normal life for that? Let us know in the comments. If you're enjoying the video, hit that thumbs-up button and consider subscribing to our channel for more mind-blowing content. And don't miss out, tap that notification